My first experience with building a floating shelf was about a year and a half ago when a customer wanted several of them over the top of office furniture I was building for her. I did a video on that to share my experience of constructing that first floating shelf. I'd always had the attitude that floating shelves were a little bit of a gimmick and not particularly useful because of the perception that I did not think they could be made to be very strong. Boy, did I turn out to be wrong about that. I have since done a complete flip-flop in my thinking about floating shelves, and since that first one, I've continued to explore different ways of building them to make them as strong as they can potentially be. Each attempt since that first video, I have documented, and I'll have a link to that playlist at the conclusion of this video. The first video went on to become one of my most viewed on my channel. I'll have a link to that in the description below if you're interested in checking that one out. The idea for this video came from a suggestion by someone about possibly using an iron pipe for shelf support, which kind of got me to thinking about that. I started playing with that thought and decided to use an all-thread rod instead of a pipe for the shelf supports. I think this is probably going to become the simplest way to construct a strong floating shelf that I can think of. Let me take you through my evolution process for building floating shelves and then show you how I insert a 5 8 inch steel all-thread rod into studs to serve as shelf supports. So the basic design I have used when building floating shelves out of wood has been to cut inch and a half by inch and a half pieces to form my backer board that gets screwed to the wall and then attach shelf support pieces of the same size by using wood dowels or wood screws and glue to hold the shelf supports in place. Then that assembly is taken to the wall and positioned so that it can be secured to studs with lag bolts. I've also used wood dowels to secure this to the wall as well with good success in some of my other videos. Finally, the shelf is finished off by building a shell that slips over this assembly mounted to the wall, and the shell can be made out of any number of materials and finished any way you want. The idea behind using threaded metal rods for shelf support assumes that you can spin the rods into threaded holes in the studs. If that can be done easily, it's possible that the weight capacity of the shelf has increased a great deal, maybe to the point that it's not even a concern any longer. It's also likely that the same type of frames that are typically used for floating shelves may be adapted to slip over the rods. I will be adding a front piece to the shelf support so that the rods can pass through it as well to give added strength. In thinking about this, one of the big challenges is to be able to drill straight into the studs so that when the all-thread rod, when it is installed, is perpendicular or at a 90 degree angle to the face of the studs. The best way to approach this, or at least one way to approach this, is to build a jig that has holes drilled into it on the drill press, which I know to be at a 90 degree angle to the table of the drill press. And if I stack a couple of these pieces together and use them as a guide for drilling pilot hole into the stud, that really should give me the results I'm looking for. But the only way to know for sure is to check it when the all-thread rod is installed into the stud. I'm hacking off a piece of my long all-thread about 7 or 8 inches long to create the tap to cut the threads in the wood. I'm not going to get too carried away with this, but I am cutting some relief slots in the rod to allow the wood shavings to have a place to go when they are being cut. And then I'll sand the threads down a little bit at the top of the tap to make it easier to get it started in the pilot hole. I'm starting out with doing a little experimentation with the all thread and the blocks I'm going to be using for the pilot holes. If I could develop some kind of tool to make it easier to put equal pressure on the 5 8 inch thread tap tool that I'm building, it would make sense that I'm going to get the best results with the tap. So I enlisted the help of my son Ryan to help me put this together. He took about a 13 inch piece of square tubing and welded a 5 8 inch nut in the center of it with an additional piece of metal in between the nut and the tubing for extra strength. Here's the way the tool turned out and I used it to cut some threads into my jig for drilling the holes into the studs just for practice and to see how it worked. Then I'll remount those threads a little when I'm ready to drill the pilot holes into the studs for real. The holes I drilled on the drill press are with a 9 16 inch bit which should be perfect for cutting threads into the hole with the 5 8 inch all thread rod. You know that looks pretty good so let's give it a try in the real world application. I'll be drilling my holes really right here for these two studs. Got a thermostat wire here that 
It's not really in play. It's coming down from the ceiling. Let's see, I'm hitting stud right there and another stud right here. However, on this side, see I've got this electric light coming on, so I'm not completely sure that my plugs and my light switches here are not connected with, with wiring. So I need to drill a hole into the sheetrock to take a look at where I'll be drilling into my stud to make sure I'm not entering into an area where there are some wires that I could potentially hit. So I don't want to do that. All right, I think I'm gonna do it about right there and see what we've got. So there's my stud, which is fine. And you, you can see that going, this is a two by six wall and I've got uh, no wiring at all going through that stud. So I'm clear to drill into it. While I have my sheetrock hole cutout piece handy, I'm throwing a piece of backing into the hole and screwing the sheetrock piece back in place so I can tape and retexture this area. The attempt at the first hole drilling into my stud goes fine, but that success is going to be short-lived. I've drawn a level line across each stud I'm intending to hit that I line up my jig on. But on the second hole I hit something hard about an inch into the stud and obviously it isn't going anywhere. It turns out for some reason there's an additional blot nail to the side of my stud and I just happened to drill right into one of the nails holding it in place. So plan B in my case is to drop my level line about an inch, reposition my jig, and drill two more holes. Only this time I got about an eighth of an inch into the sheetrock before I hit one of the screws holding the sheetrock to the studs. I guess I could have pulled the screw, but I was getting irritated by now, so I dropped my level line a third time and tried again. This time both holes drilled out nicely and with the use of my jig I got about two inches of depth into the studs which should be about as close to being perpendicular to the wall as I could come up with for any other method. In order to get enough depth into the studs with the all thread I'm estimating that maybe two and a half inches for my pilot hole into the wood to be a good number. There's nothing scientific about that depth of hole but it does seem reasonable at least. So adding the half inch thickness of the sheet rock, my blue masking tape marks the depth I want. So this is turning out to be a pretty simple process so far. The only real challenge has been trying to drill a couple of holes that aren't packed with metal. The handle and all thread cutter seem to be working just like you hoped they would. I have put two nuts on the all-thread cutter that I tighten against the nut welded on the handle. That basically gives you enough friction at the handle to be able to screw the cutter into the pilot hole and then back it back out when you bottom out. I'm just trying to carefully and slowly thread them into the pilot hole and keep twisting with a little pressure towards the stud. Alright, so I'm in about two and three quarter inches right there. I mean, that's going to be pretty darn close and hopefully again this is going to be level and and perpendicular with the wall again, looks pretty good it should be good that squeak sounds good it means we've got threads pretty tight so now I can thread my handle back on my rods that I'm using for my shelf supports. I'll throw the nuts on there just to give me the ability to tighten those up against my handle and then should be able to thread the rods in place permanently now. And that should be all there is. If this all goes well, it should be all there is to this shelf support system. All 
All right, that is bottomed out right there. So I don't want to go much more because that'll then start stripping the wood threads, I would think. Spin the handle back off. <laughs> things are now close to level. All right. I mean, that is what we want right there. It's hard to imagine that this is not the strongest floating shelf support approach that I've experimented with so far. When you flip from wood support to steel support, the whole game changes. So let me finish up this video by trying a couple of approaches to building shelves to slip over these steel rods. Now for the few of you out there that may be bugged because I messed up my wall again to do another floating shelf experiment, I will do a quick patch job on the sheetrock so that you can enjoy the rest of the video. To quickly address the strength questions, when I put my 200 pounds of weight on the ends of these rods, you can see a little bit of flex, which you would expect. But there's no concern at all about the rods breaking off or potentially failing in any way. For just normal use, these all-thread rod shelf supports way exceed any weight capacity I would ever put on them. So my basic approach for building a frame for the floating shelf works fine with the steel rods. You have the option in this case of securing the frame to the wall by running bolts onto the all threads to snug the frame up against the wall. So if you like this type of an approach, you can slip the brackets over the all threads, bring them out through this front piece just a little bit to give the front edge some support of the steel as well, and then trim out the fronts and sides with finished material and then cover the top and bottom with quarter inch uh, pieces of material as well to give you a nice finished solid look. That's one approach. So here's a second approach where I've taken two by fours and cut about two inch pieces, drilled holes on the drill press so it would slip over the rods easily. And so made a solid shelf here, which is an interesting idea also. If you want something a little more decorative and also this, that's very solid, this is certainly way to go. The trick now is to secure the, uh, the shelf to the all threads. One way to do it would be to drill small holes and run little bolts down onto the thread itself. Maybe file off the threads where the, where the bolt penetrates the wood and touches the all thread and just screw and tighten that down so that it would give some resistance as in a, a set screw type of an approach. Another idea would be to enlarge the hole basically large enough to be able to recess a washer that slides over the end of the all thread and then screw a bolt on the end which would give you kind of the industrial look of, uh, of seeing a bolt embedded in the end of the shelf. Another way to do it. But anyway, nice look, nice approach to a shelf here also. It's kind of left up to your imagination as to how you may want to approach something like this. The main point is, boy, these things are, are really solid. I have to say that doing the work that I've done with floating shelves, just experimenting with them, this has to be the best way uh, for me going forward to, to do this type of thing. I think I can figure out easy ways to make sure I'm not hitting any wires potentially. And at that stage, all it is is just drilling a couple of pilot holes and then threading those holes with the little tool that, uh, that we created uh, to do that. Spin these things in and gosh, you have a strong, strong setup. If you're still curious about floating shelves, let me encourage you to check out this playlist that's on the screen. It goes through my process of trying to figure these silly things out and come up with ways that work best for me. Thanks for watching.